Hey everybody, Craig Zucker with Z-Line Fitness. Today I have something kind of exciting that it was exciting to me. Uh, I'm going to give a bunch of tips on how to step up your game with your workouts. This is a way to create more dynamic workouts. This is also a way to train your muscles so they have the optimal ability to perform form because we have different muscle fibers, fast twitch, slow twitch muscle fibers, and there's different ways to take some of your basic exercises that you've probably already been doing, but take them to the next level. So that's what this video is all about. All right, before we go any further, if you're liking these videos, you like this stuff, please hit that subscribe button down below. Also, you want to click that bell because it's going to remind you the next time or let you know the next time I put out a new video. You can leave comments below. Tell me what you think about it. Tell me what you would like to see. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to respond back. All right, so let's get into this video. What we're going to do is look at two different ways of exercising. I'm going to show you with weights, but I'm also going to show you with like resistance bands. I'm going to be using springs off of my reformer, but it's the same thing if you have a band system. Now, if you don't have a band system, there is a band system I really like. I suggest to all my clients, especially when COVID hit and everyone was doing the home workouts through my <laughs> through the TV, uh, I had all my clients get this band system. It works really great. You can connect it to a door. Um, it's really simple simple to use and it works just like these springs so you can use it that way but I'm going to guide you through both ways using weights and using a resistance system to know how to up your game in your workouts so let's start off first with a basic concept here are things you can do now you're looking at a curl this is me doing a regular old curl and this is great but to change it up a little bit here are some things to do number one holds. That means holding the muscle, creating that tension, and give it anywhere from 20 seconds to a minute. Holding that muscle teaches it to react in a very different way than when you're moving. Now, I may hold it this way one time. The next time I do a hold, I'm going to hold it here. The next time I'm going to do a hold, it, I'm going to hold it here. I'm making those held positions that I'm doing with the musculature in different ranges of motion every time I do it. So I'm training that muscle to be able to withstand that contraction and holding that contraction for longer periods of time in all different ranges or series of contractions within it. So that's one thing, holding the muscle. Another thing to do are pulses. Short range, taking a very short range and creating this little pulse with it teaches the muscle in a different way how to strengthen and stabilize. I can do it up here, I can do it down here, and I can do it right there. And lastly, slow reps. This is one of the best things you can do for your body and for your muscles. Now, you may need to lower the weight a little bit to do these guys, but all slow rep is, is I'm taking a very slow rep all the way down. I'm looking at 20 to 40 seconds. I never go to a full straighten where it's relaxed. So I'm only going to the, almost to the end of tension, come all the way up, same thing. I go through tension all the way up, but never just full to a resting point. So there's no rest. You're constantly going through it. And it's really kind of boring, but it's phenomenal for your bodies just trying to work through it. And let me tell you, doing just two or th three reps at 40 seconds each, you're gonna be shaken. Now what's cool about slow reps that they found when doing research on it is to be able to go that slow, your body has to activate different sections of the muscle. To do that, it needs these little neuroreceptors in the musculature to be able to fire the different muscle fibers as you move through it slowly. What that does in turn with time is you build more neural receptors into the muscle, which allows you when you need it to recruit more of the muscle fibers to fire at once. So they found people that doing slow reps over time were able to actually, so say I did 20 pounds here. If I needed to, I could actually lift 50 pounds because I'm activating more of my muscle. Most times we're using about 30% of our musculature, but with the more neuroreceptors in it, they found people were able to fire up to 70% of their muscle fibers all at once, giving you more power and more strength when you need it. The other cool thing about a slow rep is that it protects the joints because you're not herking and jerking through all this stuff, you're really controlling the movement and therefore you're not going to pop or lock into the joints and not hurt it. So it's a great thing to add into your exercise. It just can be a little boring. 
And that's why when they started all these slow burn studios out here in California, they didn't last very long because you got in like four exercises and every exercise is like this. So, but it is wonderful for your body. And you can use these techniques doing holds, small range of motion pulses, and then full range of motion, but super slow reps with any exercise. So this is just doing curls. I can do it with a squat. I can go super slow with my squat. I can also do little pulses, short range pulses, higher range pulses, even lower pulses. And I can do held positions where I really connect to my body, feel the glutes work, my abdominals, everything. I love holds because it really lets me zone in on what I need to be working. Same thing with the slow reps. And this also works with resistance. So if I'm using resistance bands, same thing. I'm doing the little pulses. I'm doing super slow reps. And then I'm also doing a held, continuous hold. Now one thing, I like about springs or a band system better than weights is that springs and bands get stronger or harder to pull as you get into the belly of the muscle. You're stronger at the belly of the muscle. You're weaker as it's away. So the springs and also the bands kind of work with your body when you're working out. And I like that. It again prevents injuries, makes it harder when you're stronger to build better. And also you have resistance the entire range of motion. If I'm pulling a band from start to finish, I have resistance. When I'm working with weights, I have gravity. So here, from here to here, is where I'm getting the most amount of work in my muscle. Down here, nothing. Up here, nothing. So you kind of miss some of the range and the strength that goes on there. So, you know, switch it up though. Hey, the more you switch it up, the more you do different kinds of things, the better your body's gonna be. That's where we come into the next section. The next thing you can do to change things up is change the angle of the resistance, where it's coming from. If I'm always doing curls straight forward like this, then that's all my body learns. And if I'm doing a preacher curl, which is sitting with my arms on a bench, all I'm working is my bicep. But my bicep isn't learning the neural kinetic patterning to my brain to know what else has to work here. So I can, I can curl 400 pounds, <laughs> not really, but you know. But my stomach, my back, the rest of my body doesn't know. So if I actually use this strength in real life, it's not gonna benefit me as much because I go to lift something, this is strong, but my stomach better know to connect when I go to lift that thing. Otherwise I go and it's gonna just wrench my back. So having this connection to the whole body is where I move things next. Case in point, if I'm using resistance and I want to go this way, against the resistance, my back and stomach has to work. When I turn this way and the resistance is coming from the side, now my side abs have to work to counter the pull of the spring. If I'm using weights, I can do similar things. So it can come right in front where I have to use my back muscles with my abs to stabilize, but I can also turn it out slightly and bring so I can go from the side, so I have to work stability. If I bring my feet together, even more stability has to happen because I don't have this spread leg, very you know grounded position here, and my stomach has to work more. So even if I have my arm out in front a little bit or bringing my arm back a little bit changes things up. The position of the weights, I can change too when I use weights. Not as much with the springs, but I can use it this way. So even arm positions when you're dealing with curls helps, but when you're using weights, it's the body position. Where is it coming from? And with that, I can also have a high position or a low position. So the spring coming low, the spring coming high, when I turn sideways front, even when I turn back around the other direction, this changes how I use the muscle. And I can use this with anything, whether I'm doing press downs, or anything of that nature, any exercise I have, look at your environment and just change the direction that force is coming from. Because in life, you don't know how things are gonna come at you. Especially if you're playing sports, you don't know how things are gonna come at you. So I really implore you to, when you work out, try using different angles of the resistance to your workout. 
Now to take it again another step further with those angles of resistance or with the way you're using the weights and the different angles of resistance, change up the way your feet are standing. So back to the weights. If I'm doing a curl this way, that's one thing. When I turn it out, now I have some lateral work that has to happen in my abs to balance against that weight. The second I spread the feet apart, whole different balance. Now my inner thighs have to work. My outer glutes have to work. If I stand in a tight rope, I'm really having to balance against this weight. Now I'm training the body as a whole. Now not only am I getting my bicep to be strong, I'm getting the rest of my body understanding how to work and coordinate with that strength. So that when my child falls and I have to grab my child and I'm standing like this, my body knows how to protect itself, work itself, connect through the whole body, which will protect me. It'll prevent injuries and it will make me in sports far better when I'm changing directions, when someone's coming at me, when I have to use the ball, tennis, no matter what it is. My body now understands how to have connection through the hole, no matter which direction my feet are. I switch from this way. I go this direction. Wide stance, single legs. Yes. So here's where we get into the next thing, using balance. So at the end, the last thing I get to with my clients, you know, starting off very stable with weight, changing the angles, then changing the way the feet positions are, then I move into balance. So I'm standing on one leg. How do I do this? Very straightforward first, turn out next, leg back balance, leg forward. And if I want to even take it a step further, I use balance devices like these guys. So this is a little mat. I'll do a link to it below. Sorry, my headset's falling off of me. Come on, headset, get on there. All right, so now I can use these guys for stabilization too on the ankle, Dynadiscs, all the stuff I'll put down below if you wanna add in some balance and stability. And this goes further. I mean, if I'm going to lie on the ground, say I'm gonna just do some basic ab work, which I'll have to move my uh, mic for, you know, I have my basic abs, but then I have single leg, double legs, split legs, all different ways that I can work my abs now, connecting it to the rest of my body. I can sit on a Dynadisc. I can sit or lie down on a fitness ball. And when doing that with legs apart, then legs together, legs spread, I'm creating all different points of stability that my body has to figure out, oh, what the heck am I doing here? And when it body has to be confused and the body has to figure things out, it learns. And the more ways you challenge it to learn, the better it's gonna treat you. No matter what you're doing from sports, to taking care of your kids, to just sitting at a desk at work. Use these things, whether it's with resistance from directions or using weights, to up your game. Remember, start with the basics, very balanced, very controlled. You have pulses, you have hold, held positions, and you have slow, super slow, 20 to 40 seconds. Next step, start adding angles, different angles of resistance. Next step, switching up leg and body positioning with that, so your body has to learn in all different positions what to do, how to stabilize against that force. Next step, balance. Use balance instability while using the weights to really teach the body control in all different ways. And then if you wanna do one more step, start doing movement-based exercises. So I'm rotating through the body, switching legs, rotating through the body, switching legs, rotating through the body, stepping, movement, and bracing, stepping, movement, and bracing. I change the direction I work with, I change what I'm doing, and I connect the body in multiple different angles and movements. If you do this with all your workouts, you will become a superhero. You will be able to do anything, your body will really have that control that you are looking for. So I hope that helps you out. My name is Craig Zuck, I'm with Z-Line Fitness, helping you feel better, look better, and perform better. Hey, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more of it, 
or more like it, check all these videos out. You can also click on this link up here and you'll be directed to my website. On my website, I have a whole section of different products I use with my clients and that I love to use myself. And I also have a ton of other videos on YouTube that you could check into to get more help with your aches, pains, and having an optimal performance.